Hey, hey, you there. Yes, you. You NATO cuck. You liberal. You soy brain. Stop what you're doing. Listen the f up. Elon Musk has just given us his proposal to end the conflict in Ukraine. Now, now, maybe you've already heard some suggestions floated around, say like this one from the Finnish Prime Minister. Way out of the conflict. Way out of the, out of the conflict. The way out of the conflict is yeah. to Russia to leave Ukraine. Okay. That's the way out of the conflict. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, settle down, sweetheart. Look, I don't have time for all this feminine simplicity. I don't know about you, but I am tired of this 30 IQ suggestion that the country doing the invading should stop doing the invading. No. What we need is a 40 IQ, tech-savvy, bullet-pointed peace proposal. Now, I know you've made an instant judgement about Elon because he's a blockhead whose head is a literal block, but don't let that get in the way of the arguments themselves. Let's go into it. One. Redo elections of annex regions under UN supervision. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, can't see anything wrong with that. Holding a referendum in territory that's just been invaded, I'm um, sorry, sorry. Subjected to a special military operation. But you know, maybe if we just ignore the logistical issues with holding a secession campaign after the opponents have either fled, been jailed, or been killed. Why not? Two, Crimea formerly part of Russia as it has been since 1783. Until Khrushchev's mistake? Well, this part is just incomplete. Apparently it was also a mistake when Crimea voted for Ukrainian independence in 1991, or an even bigger mistake when Russia signed the Budapest Memorandum promising not to threaten or use force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Ukraine. A Ukraine which at this point would have included Crimea. But sure, we can count all those as mistakes because, what, Russia did an imperialism in 1783 and then continued to do so for hundreds of years? And we definitely shouldn't ask the Tatar population. I know they used to make up 93% of the population, but by 2014 they were down to 10%. No f***ing idea how that happened. So maybe we'll just amend this one a bit. Two. Crimea, formerly part of Russia as it had been from 1783 to 1954, until mistakes were made by Khrushchev, the people of Crimea, the United States, the rest of Ukraine, and of course, um, Russia. 3. Water supply to Crimea assured. Okay, maybe we have something reasonable here. Although, I can understand the complications of having to supply water to a region that's been annexed, and also heavily militarized in order to prepare for an invasion. Maybe you could argue it was a justified form of sanctions against an aggressor, or maybe you think it goes too far. I don't know. Why don't you make up your own mind about something for once? F*** you. 4. Ukraine remains neutral. Well, that's a very impressive euphemism you've done there, Elon. Of course, by remain neutral, what we really mean is leave Ukraine with no guarantee of safety against Russian aggression as if that hasn't been an issue since the f***ing Treaty of Periaslav. That was in 1654, by the way, or depending on where you are, um, 122 years B.U.S.A. Although, for this last one, I really hope Elon knows who he should be pointing his finger at. Until the last decade, support in Ukraine for joining NATO was only between 15 to 30%. Just this month, that figure reached an all-time high of 83. Can't imagine what would have happened in the last year that made Ukrainians change their mind on that. Okay, what else do we have here? Hmm. Below is the electoral map of 2012. Blue is the pro-Russia party. Um, okay. I'm sorry, is, is a pro-Russia party the same as a pro-annexation party? Does wanting strong economic and cultural ties with Russia mean that you're okay with Russia invading and shelling your cities to the ground? Does the EU have a right to invade Scotland because the majority of us voted against Brexit? Why are you posting an election result from 2012, Elon? Why did you not want to show the results from 2019, Elon? Well, it's because he has an agenda. Not necessarily a pro-Russian agenda, but a pro-Elon agenda. 
Support for Ukraine is the international consensus. And Elon is the smartest renegade black sheep on earth. And so he has no choice but to stand against that consensus, regardless of whether he's right or wrong. War is the ultimate supreme court, he says. And his war is against people not paying attention to his dumb opinions for more than five minutes. Don't like it? Well, it must be because you're not smart enough. Well, here we are, Elon. I'm paying attention to you. In fact, what I'm going to do is present your opinions in the form of a simple analogy just for the less intelligent masses. So here it is. Elon's guide on what you should do if three men break into your house. Three people have broken into Elon Musk's house. The house is called Muskov. Now, these three guys are really making themselves at home. They've reorganized the furniture. The TV is now playing in a different language, but that's okay. They've even offered to help you learn their language because, frankly, your mother tongue is, um, degenerate or something. They've even built a little prison room for you. Um, did I say prison room? What I meant to say was a nice educational facility, uh, cell. And they've had to put you in there because they forced you to confess to the political crime of not supporting their presence in your house. Now, what do we do here? Well, first of all, you definitely can't call the police. Because if you do that, then the international community of dribbling tanky dumbfucks will insist that police involvement would be an act of Western imperialism. You can't do that. You could try to take a legal route, but some people aren't too sure about that. You see, there are these opinion polls coming out, and they're showing that 75% of the people living in Muscov want Elon to give up the house. In 2014, they even held a vote where 95% of the four people in the house said Elon should leave. Here is actual footage of Elon filling out his ballot in this incredibly legit nothing to see here referendum. But wait, there's more. Now, you see, the three guys have dispatched men to Elon's other houses. Because, of course, he has plenty of those. Now, they've managed to occupy Elonsk and uh, Tesla Pole, and they've managed to take the entire Hyperloopsk Oblast. And a good portion of the pro-Elon people in those houses have either been killed, imprisoned, or have fled. Hey, you know what? Wouldn't now be an excellent time to hold a referendum in each of these houses so we can decide who keeps them? And Elon leaves if that is the will of the people. And when he moves into his new place, he has to remain neutral. And by neutral, I do mean he can't have any locks on his doors, and he still can't call the police if anyone breaks in there. So yes, uh, you're welcome, Elon. Your ideas are now finally accessible to all those pesky, mindless, troglodyte commoners. Uh, I hope you understand that this idea was not free, though. Um, you can find my Patreon link in the description of this video, and uh, if you want, you can also just throw me a one-time donation on PayPal. Uh, I'm not really fussed. Take care, Elon.